Well, today what I'm going to do is a little bit of an experiment. I'm going to see if I can cast with resin crate using my silicon moulds, but also some silicon stamps and see if that comes out. Now, I've done this with resin about two years ago. I've got a video on it, so check it out. Now, quick tip. If you've got dirty moulds like I have here, this has obviously had mica powder on. What I've found is these big wipes. They are amazing. They're amazing at getting resin off things, and they're amazing at getting moulds clean. Honestly, they've not done any damage to my mould. They're environmentally friendly, and they smell lovely. They are much, much better than baby wipes, which is what I've always used before. And now I'm moving over to these as well as baby wipes. It's not just these. Look how that's lovely and clean now. So these are my things. I'm going to make a bathroom set. And I'm going to test it out to see if it sells well at a craft show I've got coming up. I'm probably only going to make one. If it sells really well and the feedback's really good on it, then I will make more with different things in them. So I've got a little bowl, a dish, and a soap dish, which I know always sell brilliantly anyway. And the first things that I'm going to do is put my stamps on. Now, I've chosen a butterfly motif, and these are the stamps. Now, I've cleaned them up really well using those wipes, actually, because I want them to adhere as well as I can to this silicon before I pour it. So I've got those in there. Push those down nice and firm so they've adhered to that, and they've adhered to their lovely. Put that somewhere safe. I'm not putting one in this because this has got ridges in, but I'll show you what I'm going to do to add some butterfly motifs to this afterwards. Now I need to mix up my resin crete. What I'm going to be using, you know I love the resin crete. It's so much better than Plaster of Paris for this sort of thing. Plaster of Paris still has its job, but this, once it's fully hard, dries much harder than any of the other casting powders I've used before. So this is why I always recommend this resin crete. I'm using the 25 minute working time one today to give me that little extra time because I'm not sure if this is going to move about or anything. It just gives me that little bit extra time. If you haven't got that one, then I'm sure that the general cure one will work just as well for this. In fact, I know it will. I'm going to mix it up as normal. You've seen me use this lots of times. Remember though, when you mix this up, it's always 100 grams of the powder and 30 grams of water, not the other way around. I know a few people have got confused about that and I'm not surprised because it isn't really clear on the packaging and I have written to Jay Diction about that. Okay, I've got my first batch mixed up now and now, unlike me, because I don't normally do this, I am going to put some colour in it and I'm going to use the yellow pigment for this. Now, I'll probably have to do this in several mixing batches because I like to mix up in this nice small pot. I don't know why I didn't mix more up at once because it's not like I have to use it really quickly because it does wait at least 25 minutes before it's fully cured. And because this is a really white product, it does give you a really pastely kind of finish to your colour afterwards. But I like that. And to be honest, it seems to be selling really well when I've done it like that before. But I would have been better off doing it all at once because then I wouldn't have had to worry about matching the colour. So if they're different tones of yellow, then so be it. That's ready now and nice and mixed. I did decide to put the other butterfly on there, as you've probably noticed. So all I'm going to do now is pour that in there. And I'm going to pour it halfway up to start with. That allows me to go around and do a bit of squidgy widgy just in case I've got any bits caught up or any bubbles trapped in there and let's just hope that this butterfly stays where it is it's not going to come off because of the water in the product again i'm going to just go around tapping that gently as i go around now i know this technique works with resin because i've done it a lot in the past using different techniques and i've made a lot of videos on it in the past as well there we go that one's done and now i can put that to one side all i need to do now is to fill up this one now it's got a little rim around it this pot and i like to fill the rim up as well because that way i know if i've trapped any bubbles in it or not and i don't think i have in that one I'm going to leave it now for 25 minutes to fully cure and then I'll leave it an hour after that before I demold it. Even though you can demold it within 30 minutes of it being cured, like I've said before, that's not a challenge. Do you know what I mean? The longer you leave it in there, the harder it's going to be and the less likely anything is going to break when you demold it because the stuff's not quite solid. These are all cured now and they shouldn't be too difficult to get out. That has worked and that has come out as a beautiful bowl. Now let's have a look and see how well the thing in the middle has come out, the butterfly. Now obviously it didn't stick completely to there because it's got a little bit of underpour. But actually 
I can just break that off a little bit with my fingers and these tweezers. And that is never going to know that that is there. And then pull that out like that. And look at that. That has really given a great impression of that butterfly in there. Look. Well, that's worked out so much better than I thought it was going to work. I knew it worked with resin, but I wanted to see if it worked with this. So I've got another technique that I'm going to show you with these indented butterflies. And I want to quickly say a quick thank you to Vincent Ferrari, who's one of my members. He was the one who suggested I try this. So thank you, Vincent. You're a top guy. And if you haven't already done so, he does some really interesting interviews with crafters on YouTube. He recently interviewed Bobby Duke. So definitely give him a look up. And he's my first shout out for October. And there's a lot more new channels and smaller channels who are going to get a shout out from me as well throughout October. So listen out for them. So I'm going to leave these now overnight to make sure that there's no real moisture in them now before I do the next stage. Before I do anything else to these, what I'm going to do is seal them. I'm happy now that they are lovely and dry and they're ready to be sealed. I always give them about two days in a warm place to fully dry them. What I'm going to use to seal them is just a normal satin varnish. Now, you may be wondering why my satin varnish is like this, and that's because one of my members on the channel suggested that I keep all my varnishes in old sauce pots that have been washed out. And do you know what? It was one of the best pieces of advice they've ever given me because my varnish keeps clean i only have to use whatever i want to use and at all times it is lovely it is so much easier to use and a lot less mess so good tip there if you want to be a member and benefit from all the tips support and everything else then the link for that is in the description below and then you also get your name come up as well in all my videos so all i'm doing is giving this a coat i'm using satin because i don't want it to be a really high gloss finish and i'm making sure that i go over everywhere both inside and out of this to give it a nice sealing now, if you don't want to use a brush, I'm sure that you could get a little sprayer and spray this on. But I actually quite like the brush. And then I'll let that dry naturally before I do the next stage two that I'm sure you are going to love as well. I also want to say a massive thank you to everyone that got me a coffee last month. It's you people that allow me to live my life dream of being a full-time crafter. It really is appreciated. And without you people, I could couldn't carry on doing this so thank you so much if you want to get me a coffee then the link for that is in the description below now they're all dry i've got a couple of things that i want to do to them to embellish them now one of them is i'm going to paint on some silver metallic paint and this is just an acrylic paint i've not tried this before so this is a complete experiment i have no idea what this is going to look like i thought i would just do the butterflies in that that are indented and then once that's done i'm going to do the other ones and then i've got a couple more things that i want to do i'm going to put some tattoos on it and then the third thing is how to seal the tattoos and then how i'm going to make this stand out a little bit more as well and not be indented in case you put soap in it and you don't want all the gungy soap getting in it while the paint is drying i'm going to put my tattoo on to my resin cream and as it's sealed then the tattoo will go on here no problem at all always remember and i say this every time i use tattoos to take that plastic bit off because if you don't it doesn't stick to your piece it sticks to your plastic bit then all you need to do is take a little bit of sponge like this get it wet and because we've sealed this with varnish anyway the water's not going to affect this. And then you just need to push that onto where you want it. This has got ripples in it. So I'm hoping that is going to stick to all the ripples. And I'm sure it will do. And then once you've got that on there, once it's wet enough, that should just slide off. And then I'm going to take my sponge, which is just a little bit wrung out now, and push that down to make sure there's no bubbles in it but be very gentle with it at this stage okay so there's my butterfly on there and i'm going to let that dry and now i'm going to give these a second coat and then i'll come back i'll show you how i'm going to seal the tattoos and what i'm going to do with these indented bits well these are all nice and dry now and i've added two tattoos onto there and i think it gives it a nice three-dimensional look and what i'm going to do now is using the low viscosity resin and the reason i'm using the low viscosity resin is because i don't want it to be domed i want it to lay flat and all i'm doing now is filling in 
this whole piece where the stamp was. Not only will this protect the butterfly, but it'll also prevent if you're using soap or anything like that in there. It'll also prevent any of that gunge getting in there and keeping it nice and clean. And it now looks like that butterfly is in a jar, which is a shame because we don't want to keep butterflies in jars, do we? Going to burst any bubbles that come up with a long neck lighter. I'm going to do that with all of them going round. And this low viscosity resin is ideal for this. It will cure beautifully and hard as well as being flat when you've cured it. So far, I'm really liking that silver. I think it looks lovely. I mean, you don't have to do silver. You could do any colour you wanted to. Or you don't even have to do a colour. So I'm getting rid of the little bubbles now that have got caught in here. There's one there. Lifting that up with a micro brush with the end taken off. So that bubble can come up and it's not going to be stuck on there. Couple there. Let's just burst those. Make sure, oh, there's one there I can see. And now I can take my big Jadiction UV curing lamp, put that on for 180 seconds and let that do its business. Don't forget when you hit the 180 seconds, it will scroll through in 360 second bursts and we'll let that cure up. They're all nice and cured now and as you can see, they've come out really well. I love the way that that looks in there, especially the jar one. I think that has come out really cute. And all I'm going to do to seal these tattoos is with the same varnish that i used before go lightly over it let that dry and then do a second coat and you'll find that that will really seal that in there lovely it doesn't take long at all to get a nice seal you must let it dry in between because you don't want to affect that tattoo and these have already had two coats i think that has come out beautiful and I do love the bowl as well, the little individual ones going all the way around. And it's such a pretty bowl. I love that mould. I will link all the moulds in the description below. I'd love to know what you think. I think these sell well and you can do them bespoke as well. You could do them with any of your stamps, depending on what you want to use. And in any colour as well. So you could do a lot of bespoke orders with these. Definitely going to take these to my next craft show and see how well they sell. I'm probably going to sell this whole set for about £35. And I am sure it will be snapped up at that price. Don't forget, boot that like button, hit that subscribe button. Be sure to check out the video that's coming up next. I think you'll love it. It's another experiment I did with Resin Creek, which came out far better than I could have ever dreamt of. And that video is on my other channel. If you click the video that's on the screen now, that will take you over to there. Links to everything are in the description below. Take care. Enjoy your resin. Bye.